Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right. So, this in a, this video is for entertainment purposes only because the reality is I don't know what's going on with Kawhi's knee, and I wish him well and for him to get back on the court isolated and independent of any jokes or bull crap I got to say because at the end of the day, I don't know what's going on in that man's body. I never have. Now it's time to get into the bull crap. Steve Ballmer, you have got to stop letting Kawhi Leonard con you man you're literally like one of the 100 richest people in all of the world stop letting this man con you how many years are you going to do this with him bro how many years are you going to allow him to sit on your bench and collect a check from your team while telling you he can't play it becomes a situation but one has to ask if Kawhi Leonard ain't good enough to play ball at all because he's only played like in literally like six games in the last four three years if he ain't good enough to play ball at all why is he still eating up so much of the clippers cap space let's just be honest and i'm not a clipper fan obviously in fact i'm a clipper hater so for me i can watch them do this and feel good about it but the GM inside of me, the, the the basketball fan, the guy who sees 16 extra roster spots for 16 dreamers out there who I happen to probably be good enough to play ball but are not because they're waiting for their opportunity. Yeah, I look at his roster spot and I say, it's time for him to get up off of that. I'm just being honest. It's time for him to get up off of that. They are building around him, Paul George, and a bunch of other pieces. And those other pieces, they're really, really come together and make a really good team you know they're not a complete team i think they could use a few things particularly more size to help zubats but if you add a real superstar to Kawhi leonard that's a real team it ain't even got to be a superstar you can replace Kawhi leonard with og and anobi and that's a serious contender right there because the clippers don't need a whole lot they have a good coach they have a deep team they just need size and they need their stars Paul George is always available, even though much has been said about him missing games in, over the years, too. At the end of the day, he ain't pulling no, I can't play at all. At all? And mind you this, Paul George was in a very good spot for himself. He was in Oklahoma City with Ross. They, were, they had good synergy going on. That team had cap space and picks. It was a lot of things that they could have done with Paul George's value that would have sent him on a better path than having him sit up in Clipperland, missing a third of his team every year. Because Kawhi Leonard eating up a third of the cap and never playing. This has got to stop. The Clippers have done this for as long as the Lakers have done this. We put our team together. Was it five years ago, four years ago with AD and Braun? Y'all been together the whole time. What do you have to show for it? Now, I know they went to the, what was it, the conference finals a couple years back. Was Kawhi a part of that at all? If you would have replaced him with the, a superstar... At that time, how far do you think they would have got? Replace him with a superstar last year. How far do you think they would have got? Replace Kawhi right now with a superstar. And they're going to be a much better team. This is the problem. It's like, and they're allowing Paul George's years to waste away like this. And nobody's going to come to the Paul George's defense because he's Paul George. Nobody cares. But you should because it's one of the best offensive and defensive players in the game. And he's in his prime. And if he added himself to your team, you'd be significantly better right now. I look at my Los Angeles Lakers team, I say, I ain't no Paul George fan. But if you put Paul George on our roster, you can add about 12, 13 wins to our situation right now. Immediately, just poof, straight into the playoffs, probably straight into the second round without any concerns. I just think Paul George could use a trade somewhere. Obviously, trading Kawhi Leonard is the focus, right? Because clearly you want to get out from under that contract, but... If I'm any of the 29 teams in the league, I'm lowballing them for that contract. I'm offering them dirt cheap, nothing for that contract. Why? Because I don't think the players attached to the contract's ever going to play. You can tell me Kawhi Leonard's the greatest player of all time, if you want, if that's what you feel. I don't know why you would say that, but you, you can rate him as high as he's actually supposed to be rated, just the same. But at the end of the day, if he's never going to play, then what is it that I actually have? That's what I have to tell myself. And this is what I've been saying for the Clippers since he got there. 
much has been said about Ben Simmons and his focus mentally, you know, as it pertains to not being on the floor for a couple years, trying to get his mind right, trying to get out of Philly, trying to do this, that, the third, did the back, and all the things that has happened with him. Much has been said about Anthony Davis and how he misses games and how he's this and that and doesn't make doesn't find himself on the floor or whatever. All this has been said about all these different guys. And yet Kawhi Leonard just continues to skate. And every single year, they give the Clippers the highest rating. Oh, the Clippers are the best thing since sliced bread. Stephen A. Smith does it every year. It don't matter what year it is, he thinks the Clippers are going to win. And every year they do the same thing. Why? Because Kawhi ain't going to be there. He's not going to be there. I don't have any problems with people saying Kawhi is great. I saw what you saw. I saw in Toronto. I saw in San Antonio. I seen what you seen. I know who he is. But if he ain't going to play, he ain't nothing. You know? So the, my thing is this. When a person shows you who they are, believe them. Kawhi Leonard showed me exactly who he was during the summer when he signed with the Clippers. When he was pretending like he was interested in signing with the Lakers. And allowed for the free agency pool to dry up on on our team while he was actually intending to go with the Clippers. His intention was to bleed us out while pretending to be coming to our team. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to be a real competitor. He wanted us not to have enough so he could take himself to the Clippers and try to exalt himself as the king just to undermine LeBron James and the LA Lakers. That was his intention. He was trying to step on LeBron's return to LA. When he had an open invitation to join LeBron in L.A. To be his teammate and help him win. We were trying to help Kawhi get a ring and that's how he was acting. We were trying to help him be a part of the team that was going to win the championship that year. And his entire intention was to use that to position himself to get what he wanted while simultaneously drying out. His main competition. And you know what he got for that? The ability to watch us win the championship that same year. That's what you got for investing in Kawhi Leonard, Steve Ballmer. That's what you got. As long as the focus, and I'm going to say this for the Clippers, as long as the focus is to undermine the Lakers, you're always going to be cursed. You have to focus on what you're doing. I've been saying this for the Clippers, about the Clippers for a long time. Just get focused on what y'all doing, man. The best thing for y'all to do was to take this team, move it to Birmingham, and change the name. Because we don't want the team here. Y'all ain't been doing right by the city. We're happy with the Los Angeles Lakers. Y'all ain't going to overthrow the Lakers. They've been winning the whole time. They've been here for 75 years. There's nothing you can do to overtake the city. No one here wants the Clippers at all. And when they put together crap like this and undermine the Lakers, it just makes it more satisfying to watch them fail. But we've gotten to a place where, just honestly, as a person who analyzes the game, I don't want people who watch me to think the Clippers are a real contender. I don't want people who watch me to think I actually think Kawhi Leonard is somebody you should invest in. I don't want people to think that I believe Kawhi Leonard is actually out to win. If you acquire him, because I think he's out to protect himself from the rigors of the 82 game schedule, collect as much money as humanly possible. And that's it. I believe that man retired three years ago. You hear me? Three years ago. And he's still collecting the check. Luau Dang style. And the evidence shows that that is exactly what's going on. Who gets the worst of it? Paul George. Paul George, he gets the worst of it. Ty Lue, he gets the worst of it. I want them to do right by those two players. I think they have a chance to do something good with the group that they have. They just have to take Qualin's salary and give it to the people who are actually going to play the games that he's supposed to be playing. You might actually get that first red, white, and blue banner that y'all want to put up. But as long as y'all continue to pretend that you have a big two, when you know damn well that one ain't ever going to come back out there. And if he does, he'll play for about a quarter. And then he'll go back to his mindset of, nah, the body ain't right. You can't convince me this man has leg injuries and knee injuries that have kept him off the court for two years. And then have me look at pictures of him physically. 
and his legs physically right now. You, I, I, those two things don't come together at all, you guys. They just don't. The man's been squatting for two years straight. He's put on at least 10 pounds a thigh. And you're telling me the first time he gets back out there, there's knee problems immediately? How the hell did you get this heavy, bro? How did your leg go through the rigors of getting that heavy? I'm not buying. There's nothing to buy. This is bull crap. This is the same con crap that he used on the Lakers when he was pretending like he wanted to be with us, but really was actually going to the Clippers. It's the same formula. He's conning yards like con does. <sighs> and NBA allows it. You just allow it. I'm just like, all right, y'all can keep on doing this, but the Clipper fans are going to suffer, all three of them. The Laker fans are just going to laugh. We don't care. But it's just one of those situations where it's like Paul George's career just go down the drain. No ring for him. It's just like, I don't know, man. I don't know. You put Paul George in a situation that's really good, he's going to be in the mix for an NBA championship. Throw him on the Knicks right now. He'll be in the mix. Send him up to, it ain't even got to be a team like Cleveland that's already got enough. Send him to Orlando. They don't have enough. Do some of the Eastern Conference. Send him to, send him to the Boston Celtics. They're going to win the championship. You send him to any one of these teams that he's not on, and they're going to be a good playoff team. But nope, you got to sit there and clip the land, waiting on Kawhi to come back around. Kawhi played two games, and then be out for eight games, and then trying to figure out if he ever wants to come back again. Wishy-washy timetable. He ain't going to just flat out say, yo, the knee is degenerative. I'm done. Here's your money back. Make the team better, I believe in you. He ain't going to do nothing like that. Nope. He ain't going to do nothing like that. And giving back money is not something I would necessarily do myself, but I'm just saying, he ain't going to do nothing to help the team. He just keep drawing away from its lifeblood, and they're going to keep sending that team out there. They're going to fight hard. They're going to make the playoffs. They're going to get knocked off, and he's going to be sitting back collecting a check. It's got to stop, y'all. It's got to stop. I like the fact that he's a quiet guy. You know what I'm saying? The demeanor makes it easy to palate a lot, right? You don't see, when you equate quiet people, you don't think this type of stuff. That's not, but the behavior, the actions speak loud. He don't have to say a word. Just like nobody else does in life. Nobody else says say nothing. Just show me. I'm going to see it through the tea leaves. And the tea leaves are showing me that is a con artist. A very quiet con artist. Who knows? Who knows that he don't have an intention of going back out there? He don't. Every time he go out there, I mean, it's a quick strike too. Boom, pow. You clearly see the talent as soon as he gets on the floor. Boom, straight to it. Boom, score with ease. I mean, ease. I don't think I've ever seen anybody strike the Lakers as fast as Kawhi Leonard strike the Lakers when he checked into the ball game. That one time he played for the Clippers this year. That man came in and hit us so fast with a score. And that was it. I think they set him back down. And I'm I'm almost certain he, they ain't seen him out there since. I'm almost certain that was the last time they saw him. And the first thing I said is, wow. That dude really can't score whenever he wants to. He ain't played in two years. Checks into the game and gets a bucket within like three seconds. I don't, I don't think it was three seconds. The dude like literally got the ball and ran straight to the rim. And I'm just sitting here like, wow. And you don't see him again. Like, that shit is in his head, man. I'm just going to tell y'all what I think freely. Because the disclaimer's already been said. I think this stuff is in his head. I don't know what the word would be for that. But there's something to that. To where you tell yourself, uh-uh, I can't do it. Even though you literally can. <laughs> I think it's one of those. I truly do. And since he understands it, therefore he's conning them in that regard. But he knows. He knows it's that's that's just my theory. He know. You know what I'm saying? So at this point it's like the Clippers keep on building around him. They're gonna ride this thing out. They're not gonna get a single championship, and we're gonna be happy about it as Laker fans. But at the end of the day, it didn't have to go that way. Steve Ballmer wasted years and it's just not necessary. He didn't have to do it. It was never necessary. You got the L.A. Clippers. What does that mean? You got the L.A. market. Period. You can do whatever you want with that. 
you get cap, just like I tell the Lakers, you get your, your your picks, you get your cap space, you build your farm system, and you leave it alone. The Clippers and the Lakers are both good at that. Clippers are just fine at that. They have no problem getting good role players all up and down the roster. They got great scouts. You know what I'm saying? So there's no reason for the Clippers to have done this. Look at Shea Gildress Alexander right now. Tell me you wouldn't have rather have Shea Gildress Alexander and all the picks that they gave up instead of what it is that they have right now. Granted, they, they traded him for Paul George. But nevertheless, that was done to get quiet. I would rather have Shea right now. I would rather have the Shea in picks than Paul George and Kawhi with what they got going on right now. Looking at how Shea's playing right now, what his future's about to be, and the picks and the type of players that are coming down the pipeline, the Clippers would be so much healthier of a franchise if they just had all that back. And this is what we say about all the teams that mortgage their future. How many of them actually ha- are happy about it right now? The Lakers won a freaking championship doing it, we ain't happy with it. You know the Clippers ain't happy. You know Brooklyn ain't happy. It doesn't work. Minnesota just did it for Rudy Gobert. You don't do that. Atlanta just did it for DeJounte Murray. You don't do that. You mortgage your entire future to get a player right now that ain't going to help you win a championship. It doesn't work. It does not work. So that's what I got to say, man. Draft your own players. Invest in those players. Keep your picks. And do it that way, man. It's easier when you have your own bird rights. I was looking at the Utah Jazz. All of the players they have right now, all of them, they didn't draft. They're every last one of the guys that are active on that team from top to bottom. They didn't draft none of them. And while that is by design, when it's time for them to keep that team or re-sign some of those guys or whatever, it's going to be impossible to do because they don't have their bird rights. <laughs> the team is inevitably going to break up. you got to have your own stuff, man. Every franchise needs their own stuff. So, that's just my little take on things, man. Like I said, Kawhi Leonard, you know, if there's something really wrong with the knee, which I think it probably could be, fine, whatever. But I don't know why you're so heavy leg-wise. I don't know how how the hell you put on all that weight and then all of a sudden you immediately get back on the basketball court and get hurt. That doesn't equate. That don't make no sense. And I'm not going to pretend it makes any sense. It doesn't. So, that's what I got to say about that, man. It feels good to be um, someone who doesn't support the Clippers because that means I have a lot of championships just off subsequently. Uh, and I want everybody to know that I'm proud of that. Every time we talk about the Clippers, you need to understand that we have 17. They have zero. And it's going to stay that way because of the decisions they make. If I was running things, we'd have more than one already. I promise you that. Since Blake Griffin, we would have won at least two championships if I was running things. But they always end up doing the wrong things. Putting the wrong players together, overpaying people, leaving other, leaving certain positions unfilled. <clears throat> now it's the backup center position. It's always something with the Clippers. With, with BG, it was a small forward position. With, with and, you know, the BG, and of course that's Chris Paul. And then with the small, with um, with Kawhi and PG, it's been uh, without a point guard until they got John Wall just now. So it's like, I right, nah, Clippers always missing something. Worse for me. So that's what I got to say, man. I just want to send the Clippers a little bit of hate, send some Kawhi, a little bit of, um, you know, just skepticism. Skepticism for his bull crap. That's all it is. It's bull crap. You know, I, I just my thing is why can't y'all just tell us what's really wrong with people? <clears throat> That's my thing. <laughs> Granted, I don't think that you know once you get certain information, you realize it ain't your business. Certain medical information is not my business. But like when it comes to stuff like this, athletics, it would really be nice to know that something's really up. You know, it, it, what else is up so that things can make sense to us fans? Because right now. Looking at this, it ain't a whole lot makes sense in regards to Kawhi's situation. It looks like people have neglected his health. You know what I mean? As it pertains to the organization and not handling him properly. That's what it looks like. You know, if you want to take it at face value, he's still hurt after all this time. What the hell were y'all doing to this man? Why wasn't? Why isn't he healthy? And that's another thing I said to Steve Ballmer. You're one of the richest people on the planet. Why is Kawhi still hurt? <laughs> if anything, you should have been sending him to the Baltic Mountains farthest away to the best possible knee specialist in the history of the world like there should be no reason for Kawhi Leonard not to have the best possible stuff if I'm the richest guy in the league and he's making up a third of my cap I'm sending him to Tibet I'm sending him to Antarctica I'm sending him wherever he needs to be to be right 
Do you understand what I'm saying? If there's anywhere on the corner of the earth that I can do to make him right, he'd already been there twice. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on there. But at this point, if I'm Steve Ballmer, I'm cutting ties. I'm not, I'm not gonna keep on doing this. I'm not doing this. My name is BDF44. I thank you all for watching.